Oh, welcome back to my woods. You know, I just finished making a grisby for a guy, and uh, before I shipped it off to him, thought I would take the opportunity to make a video and talk about the zipped-in bug net and some of the decisions that I had to make in making that zipped-in bug net. So this is the total package. We got a stuff sack here. We got the hammock inside with uh, full suspension. Um, this thing right here uh, weighs 15.3 uh, ounces. Um, the bag is black. The hammock is black. The uh, suspension cord is orange. We're calling this the Bengal Bridge. So let's talk a little bit about the spreader bars. I have Easton spreader bars that I uh, get from uh, Quest Outfitters. Uh, as usual at the head ends, I'm using ones that are 0.625 in diameter. And with the end tips here, this head spreader bar weighs 141 grams. And what I've done at the foot end is to save a little weight, is I'm using a lighter weight spreader bar. Uh, I can get away with that because there's not as much weight down there. I can get away with that because uh, the foot end is a little narrower. So you work out the forces, you can, you can uh, apply less force down here. So this thing right here weighs 51 grams. And so altogether we have you know, a nice lightweight package. Uh, so let's have a look at this, uh, this bag a little bit. And so it's a bag inspired by um, the kind of double-ended bag that Warbonnet guy puts together. So it opens at both ends. Uh, what I've done is to use uh, spear no tangle cord as uh, the opening cord right here with a little whipping knot that uh, we'll use as a slider. So this is an idea that I lifted from someplace, I don't remember what, but it's a nice way to make a nice lightweight uh, uh, hammock is hung now. So we'll start with the tour uh, up here, um, starting with the UCR. I'm fond of UCRs because they're efficient. And the UCR made out of Dynaglide is even more efficient. You know, Dynaglide's amazing stuff. The diameter of it is 1.8 millimeters, and it has a breaking strength of 1,000 pounds. So it's really good for hammock suspensions uh, for people in a certain range, of weight of which I am. So um, the interesting thing about, or the, one of the characteristics of a UCR is that you need to have something pulling on the tail to, to keep the berry tight all the way down. So what I've done here is I've attached a Prusik line and on the Prusik line, I have hooked that onto a soft shackle. And the soft shackle then attaches to a little nub, a little knot that's right at the end of the UCR. And so through this Prusik, after I've positioned the UCR where I want it to be, then I just tug down on this, uh, this Prusik, and this will uh, provide just enough tension on the UCR to keep it from slipping. Now let's have a look at the suspension triangle. So I'm gonna start by unclipping the ridge line. We'll come back to that. Got an espionage that's doing that. Now, the part of interest here is that the suspension cord from one corner of the hammock up to here and back down to the other corner of the hammock is all one piece. And what we've done then is to take the fixed eye loop in the UCR and just garth hitch it on there. And you would wonder if it slips, but the answer is it does not. This locks up fairly tight. It also creates a little space, a little place where we can take something like the S beaner and provide an attachment for the center line. And so uh, we can have a detachable ridge line, which is quite handy, as we will soon see. Even though we've seen the hammock is already hung, we're gonna step back and look at some of the steps required to put the thing up properly. So one starts off with putting the webbing straps under the tree and make the marlin spike hitch with the toggles and looping the UCR um, over that. And then one adjusts the UCR in the usual way so that you have the head end and the foot end about the same height with the body before putting in the spreader bars four to six inches above the ground. And then after that, when we put in the spreader bars, then the height will be approximately where it is that we want to go. I've shown this detail before, but it bears repeating. We're going to slip the nub of the spreader bar into the little loop that's right here. It can open it up just a touch and slip the nub in. And it's worth noting that this nub has no sharp edges. It's rounded, and the tip that's at the foot end is rounded as well. And that's good for uh, tarps when they go out. And so then we'll push this out and then uh, put in the other end here. So the foot end works exactly the same. We open up the loop a little bit, put in the end nub, clamps right on down very nicely. Go down here, open up this loop a little bit, slip it in, want to make sure that it's and tight, but it won't slip, will not slip. So now we have the spreader bars in. We'll note in passing that something that I put into this uh, hammock was a little pocket, and that edge of that is sewn right here into the top of that. So we can stick you know, a book in here or a wallet or things like that, which is sort of handy. 
Also, the end cap has sort of a pocket as well. As you can see, it's a little deeper than the body right here, and that's good for storing uh, spare socks or something and not have them roll off to the middle of the hammock. Now, if we have a look at the side, we see that there's a bug net that's sort of rolled up and secured to the side, being held in place by three toggles. And we have a little bit of shock cord that fits over um, a uh, cord lock and holds the whole thing in place. So the fact that we can gather up the bug net all on one side means that we are able to attach it on the other three sides. And so there is a zipper. It starts at this corner, goes to that corner, down along the side, and then down to the foot end. And actually what we have on here are two zipper pulls. There's one at this end and one at that end, so they come down in the middle and makes it easier to open and close the thing. So I'm going to take this apart now and put up a bug net and we can talk about it. So we'll just unhook toggles and the loops on all sides. The bug net is unrolled now, laying out on the hammock. And there are three things of interest that we're going to spend a little more time with. Here in the middle, we have a, a bit of tab that's going to be run through the ridge line to hold the thing up. At both the foot and the head end, we have a place that pulls up the netting. What we've done is to put some grow grain reinforcement here and punched a hole through a very small hole and some very, very small, tiny uh, suspension line. On the underside of that, at a loop and then run it through this little plastic ring. And so that's going to provide some resistance that'll pull that up. To that, we attach to a bit of shock cord. And at the end of the shock cord, we have a mitten clip that's got the tongue uh, cut off just so that we're able to clip it. And the reason for that is that we're going to now be able to hook the hook onto this and then slide that along to tension things up. A little bit more about that later. Bug net up now. The first thing that I'm going to do is disattach the ridge line. S beaners are handy because that's the loops. And I'll take the ridge line and I'm going to pass it through this grain tab that I've sewn. Two sides tab, one on the inside, one on the outside to support. And I'm going to run that through. both ends. I'm going to take the shock cord. Here's the, uh, the mitten hook. Take the Prusik loop that's on the uh, ridge line. Flip over and then just tighten that up a little bit. So do that on both ends. So I just know there's somebody out there in YouTube land that says, hey Professor Hanmick, why don't you just run the ridge line underneath of the, uh, the bug net to hold it up? And I'll tell you why. There's a very important difference between gathered end hammocks and bridge hammocks when it comes to the bug net and suspension. In a gathered end hammock, all of the suspension, all the appreciable force on the hammock is right down the middle, which means that there's no appreciable force on the bug net if it's over the ridge line and then down to the sides. The sides are not pulling down on the bug net. In a bridge hammock, the sides are pulling down on the bug net because that's where the suspension is. So you run the risk, if you haven't got the right size of a bug net, of putting undue stress on the bug net if you have the bridge line underneath it. So to counter that potentiality, I put shock cord on both ends. So it's been sized so that it lifts up uh, here. There's no danger in the middle. There's enough fabric here. But at the ends, we want to have some give, hence the shock cord.